So in the last video, we learned how to not only change our URLs, but we hooked up the ability to go forward and backwards and it only changes the URL. So what we want to do is hook into this pop state event on the window object. So this pop state is something that we can listen to globally. And this happens anytime a user navigates back and forth through the browser history, whether it be programmatically or using these back and forward buttons or the UI in the browser itself. So it makes sense for us to have a look at this in a bit more detail. We're going to add the pop state event, which then gives us an event object. So inside this function, we can say console.log. Now this is a special event, which gives us a state property. You can see that we have returns a copy of the information that was provided to push state or replace state. So if we save this out, open up our DevTools console, we can go forward, we can go back, and that's actually just logging. You can see on line 78, the state that was stored. So here we have line 78 and the objects that correspond to the particular URL. So this in fact makes our rendering very simple. So if we reset our application, we can grab our state. Now in some instances, our state will not exist. So we could say if event.state, then we essentially want to return the default state. Now this we are simply doing here. So you can see that we have const player, we select the first player and then we render it. So that happens on this particular path name. Now, if I decide to get rid of replace state and instead we use push state, we'll change this to look at that event state and go back and forth, go to our root URL. We can then go back and forward and you can see that we have null. So in our use case, if we were to clear the URL, visit the empty root, we've now added an entry into the history stack which doesn't have any state bound to it because the initial URL doesn't have any state and then we simply redirect and then set some state, which means that we have one entry which doesn't have this event.state. And we can confirm this by navigating to another state and pressing back, we have Mario. And when we press back again and again, we then see null. So what we want to do is cater for the case where we do not have any state which is why we can bring back our if statement. We can say, if there is no state, then we want to simply render our initial again. Now, instead of duplicating our entire code up here, because it's going to be the exact same, I'm just going to encapsulate this into a function. And this is going to be called the push default state. We can then call the exact same line of code in here, push the default state. And of course we want to then return. Otherwise the code that we're going to write in a moment is going to run as well. So what we'll do above here is we can say const push the default state equals that new function and inside we can then simply pass in the player that we want to render. Now of course we want to use a replace state instead of push state and then we can finally render things out which means that if we go back we can empty things out. We can go forward, forward, back, back, back and at this point our state if it does become null we would then essentially set it to not null. So by handling this, this is allowing us to handle those errors. So underneath of our handling of no state, we can ask for that event.state. So let's just check it out before we get going. We can click back and forward and you can see the entire object. So even though we have the IDs in the URLs, we've also logged our state object which means that instead of looking it up in our players array, we can say const player equals the event.state. And that just gives us the entire player object. So not only does this save us going into our JavaScript state object, which is our array above, which we have done here, for example. So in other use cases, we fetch the ID and then go and found the player where we have in fact pushed the player before into the state of our history. We're then simply asking for it anytime the pop state event happens, anytime the pop state event occurs. We can then say, I want to render. We can then render our particular player, say things out, which means that we can click, 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 go back, 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 forward, forward, forward. And you can see as we change the URL, the UI is also being kept up to date via our render function. We can, of course, comment these out and we can go click, 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 change back. And you can see that our UI is not updating. So we know for sure that the pop state event is giving us that state that we then pushed into the history API 
and then navigated to that particular ID. When we're on that ID, we can then easily go and fetch the state for that existing URL. So I think this is a really nice eye opener into the world of single page application routing with JavaScript. We've then looked at the history API, otherwise known as HTML5 mode, because the history API was introduced in HTML5. So we've covered a lot in this short chapter. What we'll do is a quick recap. We've created our data, we've created our buttons, we've mapped over our players, bound some hyperlinks. We've investigated the back and forward functionality. We've created a small render function. We've looked at creating some default state when particular conditions are met, such as an empty URL. We then push that default state and then return. Otherwise, we're going to go and then find the particular item that we are on. So if we hit refresh, we then see all the data accordingly. We've then looked at history go or back. We've then looked at history go with a positive number which is essentially forward. We've also looked at integrating the history API with our click events. And I'm sure you can work out how frameworks such as Angular, React, and Friends all integrate these APIs under the hood. So I think this is very valuable for us to not only understand, but code out ourselves. We've learned also how to feature detect. We've looked at this state object. And when you go to using things such as React Router, they actually use these history APIs very directly and you can check out the React Router course that we have at Ultimate Courses as well. So now that you've mastered the history APIs, I'm pretty sure that you could continue this journey and build out some nice routing solutions for your application and keep things nice and simple as well. So that's it for this chapter. I hope you really enjoyed learning about the history API. It is definitely one of my favorite APIs that shipped with HTML5.